Hi everyone, this is Justine Call, Gold Leader of Team Eclipse and also part of the Platinum Organization, Team Sky. I am here tonight to present my findings and experience while I was on vacation on Kauai Island in Hawaii. Um, so here tonight, I'm going to be presenting just some information that I gathered during my time there in terms of things to do, places to eat, um, places that I visited that are that appear to be great to stay at. I was not able to do any um, site inspections, so to speak, but however, what I've gathered from just visualizing what these places had to offer, they do seem to be like really great places to stay at a variety of price ranges for your clients. Um, so another part of this is you being able to use the information I give to give out to your clients to give them the best location in Hawaii to stay. So let me go ahead and share my screen and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, here we go. So for those of you that are attending this meeting, Go ahead and put in the chat box if you have ever been to a Hawaiian island, and if so, which one have you been able to visit? I'll give you a minute to uh, comment with that. Okay, so Rosen hasn't been there yet. It's on your bucket list. Okay, great. Anyone else? Michelle's never been. That's okay. Here's the thing. Hawaii is definitely, it can be a higher price vacation from what I've experienced. I've booked travel for clients who have gone to Hawaii. I've been there myself, so I know that the prices can be a little up there, but it really truly is an absolutely beautiful destination that I highly re recommend that everyone attends, um, or not attends, <laughs> um, visits is what I mean. Um, so if you haven't been, highly recommend. Each island has a lot to offer, but again, tonight I'll just be focusing on Kauai Island. So let's continue on. So about the island itself. Oops. So Kauai Island is absolutely gorgeous, just like all of the other islands of Hawaii. Kauai Island is great for clients who want to experience more of a local community vibe in a less touristy environment. Kauai is less touristy and gives more of a local living vibe, as I mentioned before, right? So there's a lot of great places to eat. There's a lot of really great local things to go to, including different music events, luau's all kinds of different things and it also just like all of the other islands has a lot of great beaches to visit that offer different types of experiences and that's something that i will mention later on in this meeting um so second Kauai has plenty of places to explore and has lush vegetation throughout the island. Like all islands of Hawaii, Kauai has multiple beaches to visit throughout. And then lastly, uh, something that I experienced a lot of that I really loved was the fact that this community had, so we stayed in the south shore of Kauai, which is the Kaloa or Poipu Beach area. Um, and it had a lot of local farmers markets. We could buy fresh produce, local foods, and you know different handmade um, items. It was really, really cool. All right. So where we stayed, we stayed at a beautiful condo property that was right on the ocean, right? So it wasn't inland so much. It was right on the water. It was called the Makahuena Properties at Poipu. So literally within a one minute drive of Poipu Beach, um, along with a five to 10 minute drive of two to three other beaches surrounding, which is another thing I'll get to later on. Um, but in my experience, the other places that I was able to visit and take a look at, not necessarily as a site inspection, but just to kind of visualize, were the Grand Hyatt, 
the Sheraton or the Marriott Vacation Club. And those kind of go in order of price ranges. The Grand Hyatt, I researched a little bit for all of you. It is a little bit pricier. They range from about 800 to 1,000 a night very expensive. So if you have clients that have a higher budget, that could be a really great option. The Sheridan is kind of in the middle. And then we have the Marriott Vacation Club. All of them have really great accommodation options. All of them have great food. All of them have beaches looking right onto the Pacific Ocean. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so let's keep going. So some things to do on the island. Most of these are gonna be located in the South shore of the island because that's where we stayed. We did travel all the way North, um, but a lot of things we experienced again was in the South shore. So first off, plenty of luau's and Hawaiian dances. For those that don't know, there is a big difference. Luau's and in, typically include dinner with a dance show, whereas the Hawaiian dance is simply just the dance itself, right? So on the South shore of the island, at least there was a really good mixture of either free or paid shows. So the free ones typically were just your Hawaiian dance. The paid versions were the luau's where you had the dinner show with drinks and so on and so forth. Okay, second off, we went to Kauai Coffee Company. We actually brought quite a few bags of coffee home because it was absolutely delicious, but it's located about 25 minutes north of the south shore of the island. It's a very beautiful drive. Um, on the way there, you go through what's called the tree tunnel, and it's part of, um, I don't necessarily know if it's a highway, but it's a busier road. It just has these trees like literally creating almost like a tunnel over you. It's a really, really cool view that I have a picture of that I'll also show later. Uh, but Kauai, Comf Com Kauai Coffee Company, sorry, um, has uh, coffee samplings. They have, you know, a whole gift shop of different coffee types that they make right on site. Uh, you can also take a free tour of, which is self-guided, of course, um, through their coffee gardens. And they have this really awesome uh, walkthrough with signs and displays and so on and so forth. They also do have a paid tour option, which is guided. Um, so your clients might be interested in something like that, where they can get more of a local person telling them about the coffee company and their process of growing coffee beans, making the coffee and sending it out to suppliers. Um, and as I said, they do have some coffee tasting samples. They also have a cute little um, like coffee and cafe shop where you can get some coffee iced coffee and ice cream to go. Um, so next, we spent a little bit of time at what's called Waimea Canyon, also known as the Grand Canyon of Hawaii. It is absolutely gorgeous. We went, we actually went two times. The first time was, both, well, both times was very early in the morning, 4 a.m. Hawaiian time. Um, and we, the first time we went, you know, it was a little hazy and raining, so it didn't look wonderful, but it was still beautiful. So we went a second time, and that second time ended up being the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. When you get there early enough to watch the whole sunrise, the canyon, you'll see it like slowly light up with all these different beautiful colors on top of being able to see the sunrise colors. They also have a few hiking trails for beginning, medium, and expert level hikers. Um, and there's an overlook area that you'll come to that you see all this information at. It is actually the Google map destination for Waimea Canyon. Um, and then next, some good snorkeling places, Poipu Beach which is again, the South shore of Kauai um, was really the number one spot that we went to for snorkeling. Of course, every beach on Hawaiian islands has opportunity for that. Hawaii has some of the most beautiful um, 
coral reefs, fish, and underwater sea life. Um, so next, another huge thing is food trucks, especially fish taco trucks. So good, I promise, so, so good. Um, a lot of them that I experienced were located in Hanalei Bay, which is the north shore of Kauai Island. And then there was also Old, old Kaloa, which is um, within a 10 minute drive of where we stayed on the south shore. So about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes within Poipu Beach. Um, and again, we visited various beaches. Next is the Spouting Horn. So the Spouting Horn is within a 10 minute drive from Poipu Beach. And it is a nature made geyser, right? So for those of you that don't know, the Hawaiian Islands are made out of volcanic rock, right? So over time, what's happened on Kauai Island is spouting horn is formed where there has been geysers formed and water shoots out. And it's really crazy. It shoots up to about 20 feet, depending. <laughs> and it's just a really unique experience uh, that we had gone to. Um, so next, we have Hanalei Bay, which is the North Shore of Kauai Island. And it's considered to be the best beach on the entire island. So we spent an, a whole day at this beach and also in the Hanalei Bay area. Um, they have some great shopping areas that has a mixture of clothing. There's some cafes, places to eat. But the beach in itself is absolutely beautiful. It's about two miles long. Um, no rocks when you go into the water. It's all sand and fairly calm water from what we experienced. And we were there at a time where um, some tropical storms had just ended around the islands and in the area that Hawaii is in. So I think it's safe to say that Hanalei Bay Beach is pretty fairly calm and family friendly. Um, and then lastly, is Hanakapai Falls Hiking Trails. So this is also located further north of the Kauai Island. Um, it's become very popular. About a decade ago, it was not so popular and people would go and hike and it's about an eight mile hike. It's very long and it can be strenuous. However, that is if you wanna do the whole hike, there is an option at a halfway point of this trail, well, there is a beach that you can sit and hang out at and call it a day there if you're less of an experienced hiker. However, with this last thing, the Hanukkah Pie Falls hiking trail, you have to book it at least a month in advance. If you have clients that want to go to Hawaii and you decide that Kauai Island is a great place for them, um, this could be a great option for them, but just make sure that you're able to help them book this far enough in advance so they can actually go and do this. Um, you have to get a hiking permit and all kinds of things. They only allow, I believe it is up to 600 people hiking this trail per day. It's that popular. Um, so yes. All right. The best Kauai Island beaches. So each of these beaches, I personally went to an experience for myself. So first off is Poipu Beach, which is, like I said earlier, about a minute from where we stayed, which is called the Makahuena Properties. Uh, it's really good for snorkeling. When you enter the water, it is rock right away. And it continues to be rock as you go throughout. Um, and it can have fairly rough waters at times. Um, so, you know, with your clients, if they have little kids, it might not be a great idea. However, if they're experienced going into the ocean and river swimming and ocean swimming, so on and so forth, this could be an okay option for them to see some really great underwater sea life for free. Right, some of these things, you know, we can go on to Viator, we can go on to Expedia Tap and find some great snorkeling excursions for the island. But if your client is on a budget, Poipu Beach could be a good option for them to go and have some great snorkeling. 
All right, so the next there's Canapoli Beach. Canapoli Beach, sorry. Yeah. And this beach had fairly calmer waters until it hit high tide, then it got kind of rough. Um, that was closer to like later afternoon. But it is also really great for surfing and seeing sea turtles, right? So when we were there, one of the coolest things, we were swimming in the ocean and all of a sudden <laughs> there was this little kid that popped up and he was like, look, a sea turtle, it's over there. And it was literally within like 20 feet of us. So it's just a really great opportunity to see some water life as well. Um, so moving on to the next is Hanalei Beach. This had fairly mild waters, as I talked about before. It's about a two mile long beach, beautiful white sands, and it is considered to be the best beach on Kauai Island. And this is located up north of the island as well. So then there is Glass Beach. Glass Beach is great for looking for sea glass. Right, this could be kind of a rare experience for your clients, not rare, but if they like more um, out of the box experiences. Um, it's definitely not a hangout beach whatsoever. Right, it's literally located next to what looks like a plantation. However, they have so much sea glass there and such a variety that if you have clients who are artistic and crafty and things like that, it's a great place to collect a hall of sea glass. Um, and then lastly, we have Shipwreck Beach, which is great for surfing, cliff jumping, swimming, not necessarily great for small children because of the cliff jumping, right? And it has fairly rough waters. Shipwreck Beach is located near the beach that the Sheraton in the South Shore of Kauai Island has. Um, the cliff jumping was really interesting. While we were there, we were going on a walk from our property over to the Sheraton to go to the Shipwreck Beach for the day. And we actually saw like several people on the cliff at Shipwreck Beach jumping off and diving in. So it is safe um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, I personally wouldn't do it, but it's there. <laughs> For your adventurous clients, I suppose. What was that? I just put dinner in the oven about 15 minutes ago. Should be done about 6.55. Okay, moving on. So some places to eat that we experienced for just ourselves. Could I ask a couple of questions real quick? Absolutely. Yes, go ahead. Okay, this is Rosalind. Um, for the the rocky beach, is it okay, like, if you wanted to snorkel there, if you have the, you know, what they call the, the swim shoes, the little, the little shoes you can get so that you can walk where there's rock or grass, or is it just really, really rocky? Um, if you have, like, water shoes, so to speak, yeah or water shoes of any kind, you should be totally fine. I didn't when I went, <laughs> oh, okay. which was a huge mistake that I made, right? Um, but yeah, you know, if people are really comfortable swimmers, they would do okay at Poipu Beach if they had water shoes. Okay. And I guess there, obviously, since it's free, you'd want to take your own uh, snorkeling equipment or do they have rentals available? Um, throughout the island, they do have stands where you can rent snorkel gear, although oh. I, I believe um, that most of the condos, not the hotels necessarily, but condos do have like snorkel equipment in the condos for you to use while you stay there. Okay. Uh, so I guess yeah. as long as you sanitized them, then they'd be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Does anybody else have uh, questions or comments or anything before I continue? If you're not able to unmute, you're more than welcome to put it in the chat box. No? 
All right, I will continue then. So some places to eat. I'm sure all of you have read through this by now, but I'll go over it anyways. So the first place, my absolute favorite was Kalapaki Joe's. This was within a five minute drive of where we stayed and within a five minute drive of Poipu Beach. They had probably the most amazing happy hour menu I've ever seen in my life, right? They had, let's see, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. $5 Long Islands, $5 margaritas, and that was the most money we spent on a drink, right? Food-wise, they have like $2 off appetizers. Um, they had 25 cent chicken wings. It's just a really great menu. And they also, on top of that, have great live music one to two times per week. Um, they are a sports bar specifically. So when recommending places for your clients to go restaurant wise, consider if they're the kind of person that would like a sports bar, right? Uh, and that's how these guys are oriented. So moving on, Brennix Beach Broiler is located right on Poipu Beach. Um, it's a place that a lot of people go either pre or post beach day to grab lunch or dinner. Um, they are a little more pricier, um, but they do have a good array of food options for every taste bud that there is, along with good cocktails, drinks, and otherwise. Uh, right below this restaurant is what's called Puka Dog, which for those of you, if you've never heard of it, um, Oh, I forget the guy's name off the top of my head, but this restaurant is a chain and was on the Travel Channel at one point, actually. And it's located right below Brennick's Beach Broiler. And they have a very simple menu. It's literally a hot dog in a bun with some sauces and relish on it, but it's so good. Absolutely delicious and definitely worth trying. Um, I didn't add it on here before, but also within these two places, there's a deli uh, located in the same area that Puka Dog is. So again, some really good options for food when you're visiting the beach during the day. All right, below that we have the Little Fish Coffee in Poipu. Again, it's about a five minute drive from Poipu Beach in the South Shore, as all these other places I've mentioned have been. And it's just a nice little outdoor coffee shop you can go to first thing in the morning. Um, then we have Cabana Bar and Grill. They have a great food menu for lunch and dinner. And they also have live music one to two times per week. Um, they also have cabanas that you can rent out along with a um, public use swimming pool. Um, and then lastly, Lapras Hawaii. They have multiple locations throughout the island. Um, they're just a small cafe and coffee shop that has some ice cream as well and delicious pastry, pastries, might I say. Um, all right. Then lastly, these are just some photos I took um, during my trip that I wanted to share with everyone uh, just to kind of supplement everything that I've talked about so far. So a really funny thing about the island that I wasn't expecting um, was this right here on the left. There's chickens and roosters and birds literally everywhere. Everywhere you go, you're going to see one. And the reason for that, as what I was told by a local, um, was that, you know, several years ago, there was a really rough storm hurricane season that they had, and it literally just blew everyone's chickens everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, they made it and had babies, and now they have chickens and roosters everywhere. So it's kind of a funny thing. Some of the shops that you can visit on Kauai Island have like hats and t shirts and shot glasses and stuff that have chickens all over them because it's a whole thing. <laughs> um, so over here on the right is what I call the tree tunnel um and this is what i was mentioning before where like when you are leaving the south shore and going to either mid mid island or up north you're going to pass through this and it's just a really really cool view um all right here is an overlook on our way up to hanalei bay 
Um, it's called the Hanalei Lookout near um, Princeville. Um, and it is a whole sign designated. It's very hard to miss, but it's an absolutely beautiful view that you cannot miss. Absolutely gorgeous. And this was on a hazy, somewhat stormy day, right? So imagine what this would look like with clear skies. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is the Waimea Canyon or the Grand Canyon of Hawaii. So this view that I captured was probably about, I'd say 5.45 to 6 a.m. Hawaiian time. Um, and as you can see, you know, all these colors start to formulate, but as the sun goes up, it's just these beautiful, rich colors that everyone should be able to experience at least one time in their life especially hikers. Again, this was a location I mentioned before that has a lot of hiking trails for beginners, um, middle experience and higher experience hikers. All right, this, these photos, uh, the next two slides I believe are from the Grand Hyatt Hotel. I was able to capture some photos without you know, getting in trouble. <laughs> Uh, we did have breakfast there. Their menu is quite expensive, but the food is absolutely delicious. I would give them four or five stars for sure. Um, this is some of their garden views. I do know that they do have some um, destination weddings at this hotel. So again, that is the um, Grand Hyatt on Kauai Island in the South Shore. All right, these are some other photos of that same location. And right here, the day that we were visiting um, on the right, this photo, uh, later that day, they were setting up for a wedding. So right here, if you have destination wedding clients, uh, this could be a potential option for them if they're looking into Hawaii. Um, oh, I had another chicken picture. <laughs> Um, so on the right here is the Kauai Coffee Company. We decided to do a free route of the tour and we just walked around um, their coffee plants and the different uh, little uh, fact uh, monuments they had set up and so on and so forth. Um, we did do some coffee sampling. Everything was absolutely delicious. You can't go wrong. Right, we had a little little lizard friends everywhere, geckos, all kinds of things. This right here on the right was the view from the Makuhina properties, uh, which was the condo we stayed at. Uh, and this is one of their sunset views from there. It's just absolutely beautiful. This was from our balcony porch. So if you see here, you know, the water is right there. You know, so for clients that wanna be right on the water, and you feel that Kauai Island is a good fit for them, the Makuhina Properties is probably a great option for them. And again, you can find them on Expedia Tap, um, and they are through Verbo, so you will have to filter the uh, condo and homes when you're searching for this. Okay, and that's all I have for tonight. In terms of the presentation, I wanted to give some time for people to ask questions or, um, you know, give comments and so on and so forth. So if anyone has questions or um, concerns, comments, anything, now is the time to go ahead and say them. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Justine, it's Rosalind again. Um, your condo, did it have like a kitchenette too where you could cook or did you just um, eat out all the time? Uh, we actually did a good mixture of both. You know, it had a full kitchen with, you know, all the utensils to cook with and so on and so forth. Um, and all the condos on that property, I believe are equipped the same way. Okay. Uh, I did look online on Expedia Tap, and I was able to find that the specific condo that we stayed at, which is overlooking the water, was only about four fifty a night, which I thought was pretty reasonable for first of all for Hawaii, and second of all being right on the water like that, right, and so close to a beach. Yeah. Um, so it is. It's not a bad price, honestly. Um, 
I know I asked because you mentioned the market. So I thought, oh, that would be awesome. You know, if you could cook, you know, fresh vegetables and stuff too. So, okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would say that we had about like a 60% ratio of eating in and cooking in the condo versus the other 40% eating out, which is at those restaurants that I mentioned. Okay. Yeah. Anything else from anyone else or from Miss Roslyn? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've asked all my questions. Thank you. Yeah, of course. No problem. All right. Well, if no one else has any questions, you are more than welcome to head out. Um, I will hang out for another minute or so in case anyone else, you know, thinks of any questions. But thank you so much for coming, everyone. I appreciate it. Again, I just recorded this meeting, so I will send out to your leaders and you will receive it that way. All right. So thank you, everyone. <laughs>